Aloha Marino Kupuna alumni. My name is Dylan Schachman. I'm from Marino class of 2006, and I'm joined by my classmate, Gotaro Oshitari. Uh, he is also our alumni relations officer here at Marino School. I'm here representing Premier Benefit Consultants. We are a local agency that assists the kupuna of Hawaii in understanding and obtaining healthcare benefits. First, we want to start off by you know thanking everyone that submitted their hacks. You know we hope that you're able to find today's video useful um, in your daily lives and. To begin, you know, we just want to congratulate um, the following alum who will receive a... They will be receiving Long's gift cards. Thank you guys so much for sending in your life hacks. We really appreciate that. To all the alumni out there who didn't get a chance to send in life hacks, you guys are missing out on some really fun rewards. Uh, anytime Premier Benefit Consultants is going to sponsor this, we'll make sure we get stuff that you can definitely use. Yeah, okay? thank you so much. So you guys want to send those in, we can get you guys some good gift cards. Yeah, thank you PBC Hawaii. All right, so the following alum, I'll be mailing out the gift cards courtesy of PBC to you. Um, Auntie Lori from class of 59, Derek Wong, class of 68, Teresa Wee, class of 72, Felicia Kimura, class of 73, and Cheryl Bonilla, class of 1978. Thank you guys. Um, so Dylan, we're gonna start today with a special segment with our very one of our very own. Um, we have a guest feature from lifelong do-it-yourselfer, Les Oshiro, um, currently the facilities manager for Marino School. Wonderful, thank you Les. Aloha Spartan Kupuna. My name is Les Oshiro, Facilities Manager at Marino School and proud parent of 2014 and 2018 alumni. I started a YouTube channel called Hacks by Dad where I share do-it-yourself tips and tricks to help simplify daily tasks for everyone. We hope you enjoy some of the featured videos today and hope that you are staying safe and active. If you have any questions, Please do not hesitate to reach out to the alumni office. Mahalo! Let's look at iPhone's magnifier app. You can zoom by slider or pinch screen. You can adjust brightness, contrast, apply filters. In low light conditions, turn on the flashlight. You can capture views and edit without needing to hold the phone steady. You can also take multiple views and switch between views. Tap N to exit. The views are not automatically saved. Tap the share icon to copy, save, or share the views, or tap and hold to bring up the share option. To enable the magnifier, tap settings, accessibility, magnifier, enable the option, and you'll find the magnifier app. Press the side button three times to quickly access the magnifier. Swipe up to close the app. Save money, stop buying beads and adjusters for your face masks. Learn how to tie this simple slip knot to make your face mask straps and ear loops adjustable. Again, without beads or silicone adjusters. The slip knot also works on thicker cords like this shoelace. The key is to cinch the knot tight after adjusting it. The slip knot also works well on a thick strap like this, which is a fabric tie on my wife's kitchen apron. Please check out my channel to see the videos where I explain and demonstrate how to tie this simple slip knot. Again, beads and adjusters are not needed, just these simple slip knots. Does the extension cord look like this or a twisted mess like this? If it's the latter, chances are someone wound the cord around their arm like this. 
and if you toss it, it'll wind up in a tangled mess. Versus taking your time and coiling it nicely like this, and it nicely unraveling when tossed. Again, we'll coil it around our arm, but this time lay it down, and it still ends up in a tangled mess. Versus us taking our time, coiling it nicely, laying it down, and having it nicely uncoil when pulled. So I highly recommend some patience and taking your time while coiling your extension cords. Hi everyone, this is pretty embarrassing, but we had mold in one of our toilets that we could not get rid of over a couple of months with regular toilet bowl cleaner. I did some research and found a one-two punch to finally get rid of the toilet mold. First, I empty the water from the bowl by pouring a bucket of water into the bowl. The first punch of the one-two punch combo was to spray the mold directly with regular white vinegar. Let the vinegar sit for 15 minutes before scrubbing the bowl. The vinegar effectively kills the mold but does not totally remove the mold. The second punch in the one-two punch combo is a cup of baking soda. Pour a cup of baking soda into the toilet bowl water, mix into the water, and then let sit for 30 minutes. After 30 minutes, scrub the bowl to remove all traces of the mold. Again, the first punch was spraying directly with white vinegar to kill the mold. The second punch was soaking the bowl with baking soda for 30 minutes to completely remove the mold. The mold used to reappear in three to four days, but this time there was no traces of mold one week later with no additional cleaning. The bowl was then cleaned with a regular toilet bowl cleaner and a week later still no mold. The bowl was then cleaned another time with regular toilet bowl cleaner on the weekend and a week later there is no signs of mold. For a total of three weeks after initial one-two punch cleaning with vinegar and baking soda. To see more videos like this, please click the subscribe button and then the bell icon. I'm upset. George Clooney mentions using the Flowbee for 20 years and people go bonkers. I've been using mine for over 25 years and no one comes knocking at my door. But seriously, here's my first Flowbee in the original box that was purchased in 1995. I kept it as a backup and it still works. Here's my second Flowbee that was purchased in 2008 and is the one that I currently use. Attach the Flowbee holes to the vacuum holes and then plug in the power supply. Select and attach the attachments and you're good to go. My wife and I purchased our first home back in 1993 and a couple years later got our first Flowbee for a do-it-yourself haircut which fit me perfectly because I'm a do-it-yourselfer. If you like this video please tap the like button and if you really liked it smash that subscribe button. Here's a quick hack with isopropyl rubbing alcohol and super glue. Moisture activates super glue. That is why super glue dries instantly on your fingers because of the moisture in your skin. Super glue can take several minutes to dry and fully bond when both surfaces are dry. A simple hack that many crafters use is to spray one surface with the rubbing alcohol. The water content in the alcohol mixture activates the glue and the alcohol quickly evaporates. In this example, it took a quick 10 seconds for the alcohol sample to get a pretty good bond while it was nowhere near that with the paint sample. It is said that this alcohol hack produces a weaker bond, 
please check out my channel for a full video where I test out the bonding strength with a surprising result. Do your shoelaces become loose and untied? Do you resort to using double knots? Here's a quick fix that doesn't use any double knots or any special knots and has served me well for over 30 years. First, tie your shoelace like you normally would. Notice if the knot or ends of the shoelaces tend to twist and in this case face straight up and down. Next untie the bowl and look at the half knot and which side goes over which. So in this case left over right. Now I'm going to switch it to the right side over the left and tie the bowl like normal. And at this time you'll see that the knot does not twist. The laces shoot out to the left and right. This is a much more secure knot and works in my case. In your case it may be the opposite left lace over right lace. This works well also on my work shoes. Here I am tying it with the left over right and the knot twists and it will become undone if I leave it this way. So I switch over to the right over left half knot, tie as normal and the knot does not twist and stay secure. Wow, lao lao, lightly salted pork butt, plain pork belly, and butterfish. Six to eight luau leaves, three pieces of pork butt, one piece pork belly, one piece butterfish. Wrap into a ball, a little smaller than a softball, and then wrap and tie with two tea leaves. Trim off the excess, place into a steamer, steam for three and a half to four hours, and finally, dig into the tender and tasty lao lao. All right, and we're back. Thank you, Les, for um, being part of our first ever Kapuna Hacks. You know, it's really cool to see him have his own YouTube channel with all those videos. He has over 100 videos, um, thousands of subscribers. Um, and yeah, we're looking forward to seeing more videos from him. Uh, he actually made these masks that I'm wearing today. Um, and he's provided masks for our entire Marino faculty and staff. Big um, mahalo to year. Uncle Les. All right, Uncle Les. All right, so we'll start with one of the first submissions we got um, from Auntie Lori Lee, class of 1959. She came by the other day and gave us this life hack, um, which is basically using baking soda and vinegar to get rid of clogged drains. Yeah, I know a lot of people, uh, they tell you don't use Drano anymore, yeah? Cause, <laughs> right, because it, it'll damage your piping. A, right, exactly. So this is more of a natural, uh, safe way that you can clean your drains and you can get all this at the local grocery yeah, store. there you go. Right. Baking soda, vinegar. Uh, right, environmentally sorry. friendly, chemical-free way to substitute for Drano. Yes, sir. All right. Thank you, Auntie Lori. Thank you, Auntie Lori. All right. So we got our next hack from Felicia Kimura, class of 1973. Um, how many of you guys are driving home from the grocery store and, you know, Hawaii, we get some bad drivers, yeah? Oh, yeah. You got to slam those brakes. And yep. what happens? Your groceries go flying all over the place. Well, Felicia Kimura, uh, after many episodes of having her bags fly all over the car, um, she goes ahead and puts them in the seat and straps them in with the safety belt. So they're not just for people, not just for kids. They're also for your groceries. You keep them so secure while you're driving home. Great. Oh, and she adds that, uh, you know, the, the best part is you don't have to look for your groceries on the floor of your car and uh, possibly find a rotten one a week later. So that, that definitely helps. Yeah, yeah. definitely. You know, uh, when I buy pho from, for takeout, I strap it in because... You know what I mean? That soup is yep. too hot. You know, like spill them. So you <laughs> them on the chair. You know what I mean? Yep. Okay. Uh, our next hack was submitted by Mr. Derek Wong, class of 1968. Um, and he says that an unusual but very effective way to alleviate cramps, muscle cramps, is to take a spoonful of yellow mustard. Um, mm -hmm. Does so it we, have to be yellow mustard? I believe it does. Yeah. And the reason Honey for mustard? this, okay. um, and this is what we found, is... <laughs> 
Yellow mustard contains acetic acid. Mm -hmm. um, yellow mustard is the only kind of mustard that's documented to relieve these nighttime leg cramps. Um, so when these nighttime leg cramps occur, mm -hmm. you take a teaspoon or two of yellow mustard, um, and it should take effect almost immediately, allowing you to get back to sleep. And you know, funny story right. is my grandma actually has a little ceramic bowl in her fridge filled with ketchup, or sorry, mustard packets oh, that nice. she gets from fast food stores. Right, she keeps right. them in there because she gets leg cramps middle of the night. Right. She'll pop over to the fridge, just suck one of those <laughs> down and she's good to go. So I think it does work. I've heard of this. Um, and then there are some other theories that the turmeric in mustard may help relax your muscles. Uh, but again, no one can tell exactly what it is. Yeah. <laughs> Worth a try though, guys. All right, and our next submission is from Cheryl Bonilla, class of 1978. And she actually sent us in quite a few um, life hacks. So we're only going to pick a, a couple to, to share with you folks today. The ones we think will be most helpful to the kupuna. Uh, right. So let's start with the uh, first one. Um, you know, most kupuna are on a pretty fixed income, yeah? And, and come Christmas time, that can break your bank. So Cheryl suggests that rather than waiting till December to start purchasing all of your Christmas gifts, you start stacking up throughout the year. Anytime you see something on sale or something that you know a loved one would like, mm -hmm. you get that, you keep it stashed away in your closet. So come holiday season, you already have everything you need. I think that's a really great idea because I know I could use that life hack. She also says, she suggests um, using broth from canned vegetables instead of water to make soup. Um, since it's been soaking up the flavor, it will add flavor to your soup and curries and you can put it in a Ziploc bag to freeze for later. And if you have any extra vegetables left over, Auntie Cheryl also adds that you can go ahead and make some quick tempura batter. And uh, it's a real quick, easy vegetable tempura with some of the extra veggies you have. That way there's no, nothing going to waste, yeah? Um, okay, so I kind of like this one about repurposing your foods, you know, um, really about saving money and being, you know, um, cost efficient. You know, she says that if you brought a vegetable platter and it's not being eaten fast enough, repurpose it. Um, she says to cut the cucumbers small and mix with ranch sauce to make sandwich spread, chip dip. You could put the carrots into curry, soup, stews. Um, you can add tomatoes to marinara sauce or soups, uh, fry zucchinis and onions. She says you could chop broccoli and mix with the creamy sauce pasta. Um, if you bought stir fry mix and you have leftovers, you know, you can use it for soup, soup stews or salads. Um, and you can also freeze it until you make a soup that calls for vegetables. So. You know, um, actually, this one sounds good. Chopping up celery and mixing it with chicken for a good sandwich spread, you know, chicken, that sounds, chicken that salad. That sounds great, You know right what I mean? Thank you so much, Cheryl Bonilla. You have so many great life hacks. I'm sure a lot of the kupuna are going to be able to take advantage of those. For, for our last kupuna hack, um, we have a submission from Dr. Teresa Wee from the class of 1972. Um, she says, you know, during this COVID-19 pandemic, we've all been quarantined at home and the pandemic pounds have been creeping up. And we all know we need to get back on track and start moving again. So how can we motivate ourselves to get off our lazy boy chairs and take that first step? So today she wanted to share with all of us um, her favorite hack for kickstarting it into action. Um, it's called the five second rule. And she doesn't mean the rule <laughs> where a piece of food may be eaten off the ground. Yeah, not that five second rule, guys. <laughs> No, no, especially not during a pandemic. Definitely <laughs> right. not. So this rule was first introduced by Mel Robbins in a TED Talk, which in fact has become one of the most watched TED Talks in the world. Um, so here she explains what the rule is about. Whenever we're confronted with what we should do or feel like doing, you know, our feelings are always going to win. And the way that this works is that if we hesitate for even five seconds, our brain will come up with every excuse or hopeless thought on why we should not do this action. Um, and this is called the spotlighting effect, and that's just how our brains are wired to protect us. For example, um, if you make the decision to start walking 10 minutes daily, you can use the five second rule to move you into action. When the time comes for you to get up and go for your walk, you grab that five second rule and you start counting backwards. Five, four, three, two, one, and immediately get up, put your shoes on, focus on your commitment to walk. As you start walking, you'll feel a lot of pride in accomplishing your goal that only took five seconds. Um, okay, so Teresa says this five second rule is a proven strategy to do the hard stuff and the work you don't want to do. And she shares that she learned about this rule five years ago because it helped her accomplish many things that she never dreamed was possible. 
Um, she says that people worldwide have used this rule with great success, and she really encourages each one of us to try it. She says to also share it with your family, and it's never too late to live our best lives and start today. Start in five seconds. You know? so no one knows what 2021 <laughs> will bring, but you know, let's keep reminding ourselves to live one day at a time. Um, she says to take small steps daily, and eventually you will find yourself gradually creating a positive difference in your future. Thank you so much, Dr. Wee. Class is 1972 for sharing um, this amazing life hack. Mahalo again for joining us today. I'd like to thank Gotaro for allowing me to be a part of the Kupuna Hack series. Uh, seniors out there, they need all the help they can get. I get to help them with their Medicare needs, uh, but little things like this I think will be very helpful for them, day-to-day -day life. Uh, thank you, Dylan, for joining us and you know, sponsoring our gift cards that we can give away and you know, being part of you know, our Kapuna program, and we hope that you continue to be a part of it. We'll see you at the next one. We're looking forward to seeing uh, you all again in person sooner than later, but in the meantime, uh, don't hesitate to reach out to us. Um, you can contact the alumni office at alumnimarinoschool.org, or you can call 808-952-7310. Mahalo again, and God bless.